for our country and for the world, for humanity. All right, well now it's my pleasure to introduce a very interesting man who is, at the same time, an Episcopal priest, a martial artist, and an academic. He's long had an interest in science and religion and conducts research that explores theoretical biology and theological biology. His doctoral work focused on computational biology and the evolution of photosynthetic reaction centers. He worked with the NASA Astrobiology Institute for 15 years, mostly on issues of communicating between disciplines. From 2013 to 2015, he worked as a researcher at Harvard studying the definitions of life itself particularly focusing on whether living things require a unique, a unique class of explanations. He also teaches the Korean martial art of Hapkido. Lucas Mix. So in, in my tradition, which is Episcopal Christianity, we greet one another by saying, peace be with you. And the response also is, with you. also with you. There have been some hard acts to follow. I will do what I can. So I, I am, as Cassie mentioned, both a priest and an evolutionary biologist. And people often ask me about my beliefs. How do I bring science and spirituality together? And truthfully, the real challenge is keeping them apart. <laughs> Because both of them are so important in our daily life and the questions that we ask. When I choose my meals, I think about biochemistry. Facts, sorry, fats and sugars and calories. And there's a big gap between reading labels and doing biochemistry research in the lab. But it's not as big as you might think because we all have a limited amount of information and we are trying to think carefully to make decisions based on it. The differences come from time and training and above all the care that we take with the way that we reason and how we make decisions. When I have my researcher hat on, I want to know very precisely what I know and why I know it. I want to know just how confident I can be in my conclusions. Meals also involve ethics, as you may have noticed. Where did the food come from? Is it healthy? Is it just? And maybe it's just me, but it involves metaphysics too. How is it that something that is not me becomes me? <laughs> like biochemistry, most of us don't have the time to investigate the details of organic farming, sustainable agriculture, sustainable packaging, transportation, and fair trade. Much less human persistence, animal sentience, and ontology. Just for lunch. <laughs> but we still have to eat. We choose, and consciously or unconsciously, we pick the issues that will matter to us, that will change the way we make decisions. So I feel very lucky that I have the time and the training to tackle just a tiny sliver of bioethics and biochemistry, to uncover the options, read the experts, and think very carefully about how my choices change my world. Still, I'm an amateur on a thousand issues that seem to me to be quite important. Economic justice, climate change, and law enforcement each of which should probably affect the way I choose lunch. <laughs> so I am deeply grateful for the genuine, thoughtful, helpful experts out there who have the time to study these things. Life is difficult, and I use all of the brains that I can beg, steal, or borrow. A few years ago, a friend of mine asked me to speak at South by Southwest on astrobiology and theology. I laughed at her. <laughs> Astrobiologists tie together astronomy and biology and chemistry and planetary science and hundreds of other things to make one natural science picture of the world. And theologians do a similar job of synthesizing thousands of years of history and human experience. 
I said, you want me to talk about life, the universe, and everything? <laughs> she said, yes. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> No, it's supposed to be a black screen. It's supposed to be a black screen. Uh, <laughs> 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 yes. I have a hard enough time figuring out whether I should eat eggs, and that's honest, I have a tough time with eggs. But in some ways, this astrobiology and theology question is the same thing writ large. It's not enough data and choices that we have to make. And how can we be thoughtful about how we do that process? <coughs> if I can share only one thing this evening, I want it to be this, that we are all cosmologists. We all tell stories about the universe and our place within it, and those stories change us, they affect our choices, and they affect our choices and our neighbors. So let us be careful, cosmologists. Let us ask who the experts might be and listen to what they have to say. We must not reason, sorry, we must reason by ourselves. I, I just can't get that sentence out, sorry. <laughs> we have to reason by ourselves. We have to reason for ourselves, we don't have to reason by ourselves. Mm -hmm. One more time, we have to reason for ourselves, we don't have to reason by ourselves. Whoa! It's going to take a while to get it right. For my part, I have been thinking about language, the way we talk about space, and how that shapes the way we think about space. The word should give you pause. It suggests a region that is both empty and available for use. Many see this as an invitation or even a duty that we should expand and take up space. Others think it is inevitable that we will spread to other stars and other planets given enough time, unless we do ourselves in. Discussions of alien life and alien intelligence often take this for granted, that life once begun must proceed to intelligence and thence to radio telescopes, interstellar travel, and galactic civilization. Is this really common in literature? I love Star Trek, but I'm more cautious than that when I'm talking about the future. Because both biology and theology do not reassure me that I know how the future is going to go. They tell me that we are part of Earth and that Earth is part of us. So I want to ask this question, what if this space was left intentionally blank? Blank space can be beautiful. Hasegawa Tohaku's Pine Trees is one of the great works of painting. We praise the morning fog and the darkening sky and the freshly fallen snow. Blank space can also be useful. A cup must have space in it to hold tea. A house must have space in it to live. A physicist will tell you that vacuum is really good for heat insulation. And biologists will tell you that cells are important because they've got space inside. So perhaps it's a good thing to have space between the stars. NASA's Mars 2020 mission is traveling to Jezero Crater. Sediments from an ancient river fan out from a break in the western rim. A wonderful gap, by the way a useful emptiness. And I can't wait to know more about that river and that ancient sea. And yet I value the space between here and there. I value the difference and the distance. Saturn's moon Titan has seasonal lakes filled with antifreeze. I'm excited about the dragonfly mission that will go far enough to see that and send us back wisdom from afar. We have found more than 4,000 planets orbiting other stars, when just 30 years ago, we wondered if there were any at all. So I like space exploration. I support the journey. 
But colonization and pilgrimage are very different ways of traveling. Pilgrims revere their destination. They remember their home. And they respect the space in between. Space can be a good thing. This is Leeds Cathedral, which was just big enough to house a replica of the moon for their science festival in June. Sometimes an object must come near for us to appreciate it, and sometimes it must be oh so far away. For me, the vault of heaven stretches over a cosmic sanctuary. I measure it as a scientist, but I love it as a worshiper. We are one species among many, one planet floating in space, and I dearly hope to find another. I want a neighbor with whom to share my worship. But silence and stillness are also profound. Maybe this space was intentionally blank. Buddhists tell of sunyata, emptiness. Muslims of salam, peace. For Christians, it is Sabbath and sanctuary. When you look up, remember that you too are a cosmologist. Your words have scientific and spiritual meaning. Words have gravity all their own. Perhaps the cosmos is more than a void and more than an opportunity. Perhaps it is sacred space. Thank you. Mm -hmm.